Why is this donkey being used as a garbage truck? And how did I get on this topic in a YouTube channel where I talk about 112 scale miniature models of Sears kit houses and life 100 years ago? Well, stay tuned and I'll tell you. I'm building a 112 scale model of a Sears kit home. This house was approximately 500 square feet and is from the Sears catalog from 1913. This house was bought in large numbers by factory owners and mine owners who furnished their employees with houses. Because the house could be built on a frame foundation instead of a stone foundation, it reduced the cost of building. Today, I'm gonna to be making the blocks that the house would have sat on if it had a frame foundation. But first, let's have a look at another house from 100 years ago. This small two-room house was built over 100 years ago. This house was built in 1911 by Tom Irving and his friend Bob Moore. Soon after the house was built, Tom's friend Bob died shortly afterward. Tom lived in this house until 1958. He was a prospector in the Yukon Territories and later worked as a pile driver and he worked on the railway for a while. Tom never married and died at the age of 100 in 1964. Let's have a look at Tom's house and try to see what life would have been like for Tom 100 years ago. We can see that Tom had a phonograph. Let's have a look at this in the Sears catalog from the early 1900s. We see Sears was selling various types of phonographs at the time. They called them talking machines. The prices ranged from $9 to as much as $45. Let's look at a mid-price model, which was selling for around $18.95. If this phonograph, or talking machine as they called them back then, was selling for $18.95. Let's try to figure out what this talking machine would have cost in today's dollars. The average wage in the United States in 1912 was $750 per year. That's just 36 cents per hour. If we say that the phonograph cost $18.95 and divide it by the average wage of 36 cents per hour, that would mean a person would have to work 52.6 hours in order to purchase the phonograph. If we say the average wage in the United States in 2023 is say $28.16 per hour, and we multiply that by the 52.6 hours you'd have to work to buy the phonograph, that would work out to the purchase of the phonograph in today's dollars being $1,481.22. Do you think this price was reasonable considering what we pay for today's electronics? Let us know in the comments. And just what exactly would you get for this kind of money? Well, the Sears catalog tells us that the cabinet was made from fine hand rubbed oak. The horn or speaker was flower shaped and very ornate and it had wonderful acoustic properties. The turntable was 10 inches in diameter. It was felt covered and you could play any size record on it from seven inches in diameter up to 12 inches. Sears said the motor would run perfectly to avoid all vibration and absolutely noiseless. It runs with perfection, uniformity, and steadiness with an automatic governor and extra long worm gear. Many homes of the day didn't have electricity. These phonographs had to be wound up in order to play the records. This one could play five seven inch records or three 10 inch records with only one winding. Let's have another look at Tom Irvine's house. We notice a camera and a photo album sitting on the table. Let's have a look in the Sears catalog and see how much that camera would have cost. We see this camera very similar to the one sitting on the table, which sold in the 1900s for about $4.10. Again, if we use the same calculation saying the average wage in the United States in 1912 was $750 per year, and the average hourly wage was 36 cents per hour, it would take 11.4 hours of working in order to buy this camera. And we say the average wage in the United States today is $28.16 per hour and times that by 11.4 hours it would take to earn enough money to buy the camera. That means the camera in today's dollars would cost $321.02. So what exactly did we get for our $321.02 in today's dollars? Well, you would be purchasing some of the day's most modern technology. This camera, according to the Sears catalog, is compact and thoroughly well made throughout, guaranteed to make perfect pictures and exceedingly simple of operation. It is covered with the best grade of seal Moroccan leather and it is fitted with an achromatic lens. Morocco produces some of the best leather in the world and they still produce it the same way they've been producing it for hundreds of years. Let's take a quick journey to the Medina in Fez, Morocco. 
The city is very crowded with narrow lanes and alleyways. These streets and lanes were made very narrow to keep the sun out and keep the shade in to keep the city and buildings cool during the very hot days. The streets are so narrow you can't even drive vehicles down them. Transport of goods is manual or by motorcycle or donkey. Medina simply means old walled city. The city is enclosed by walls and must be accessed by gates or dams which is a word which means doors. Behind one of these doors is a tannery I visited when I was in Morocco. Men work making leather in the hot sun the same way they've been doing for hundreds of years. They spend their whole lives under the hot sun working around these vats tanning leather just as their fathers and grandfathers had done. The smell is terrible. It's so bad they give you pieces of mint to hold up to your nose so that you don't have to smell the pungent odor. These are the vats they use for tanning and coloring. And here are some of the hides being dried in the sun. This is a picture I took when I was in Greece, which shows the vats used for dyeing the leather. These vats were built hundreds of years ago, and the process of tanning leather in Morocco hasn't changed either. As I mentioned, the streets and lanes are so narrow in these cities that you can't get a car through, and in some places, you can't even ride a motorcycle through. And when they collect the garbage, they use donkeys with large baskets on their backs. This is an important job with so many people living in such a congested area. You need to ensure that there is good sanitation sanitation and the donkeys get paid in food scraps that are left out in the garbage. As you can see here, the food scraps aren't thrown in the basket. Bonus! And the donkey gets to eat the food scraps. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I have some really interesting stuff coming up in the next video, which I'm going to be telling you about at the end of this. So stick around. So let's get started and make the wooden blocks for our 112 scale Sears kit house model. Hey, don't, don't, hey, hey, don't leave yet. There's more to come. There's more, hang on. So the next step in building our Sears kit house model will be to make the blocks look like they were made of concrete. A similar method that I'm going to use was actually used in a very famous Sears kit house. And I'm gonna tell you all about it in the next video. So make sure you like and subscribe because you don't wanna miss it. We'll see you in the next video.